All right, Exodus 39. I'm reading Torah portions. Got the headset on, yeah. Okay. Exodus 39, entire chapter, and chapter 40, entire chapter. And of the purple. Okay. <laughs> And of the blue and purple and scarlet, they made cloths of service to do service in the holy place and made the holy garments. Yeah, right. I'm going to keep going. I just realized it was plugged into my phone. I'll just start over. There we are. Okay. Houston, do you read me over? Ha, ha, ha. All right. Exodus 39. And of the blue and purple and scarlet, they made cloths of service to do service in the holy place and made the holy garments for Aaron, as Yahweh commanded Moses. And he made the ephod of gold, purple, gold, blue, and purple, and scarlet, and fine twined linen. And they did beat the gold into thin plates, and cut it into wires to work it in the blue, and in the purple, and in the scarlet, and in the fine linen, with cunning work. They made shoulder pieces for it, to couple it together. By the two edges was it coupled together. And the curious girdle of this ephod that was upon it was of the same, according to the work thereof, of gold, blue, and purple, and scarlet, and fine twined linen, as Yahweh commanded Moses. And they put them in on the shoulders of the ephod, I'm sorry, and they wrought onyx stones enclosed in ouches, ouches of gold, graven as signature graven with the names of the children of Israel. And he put them on the shoulders of the ephod that they should be stones for a memorial to the children of Israel as Yahweh commanded Moses. And he made the breastplate of cunning work like the work of the ephod of gold, blue, and purple, and scarlet, and fine twined linen. It was four square. They made the breastplate double. A span was the length thereof, and a span the breadth thereof being doubled. And they set in it four rows of stones. The first row was a sardius a topaz, and a carbuncle. This was the first row. And the second row, an emerald, a sapphire, and a diamond. And the third row, a ligure, an agate, and an amethyst. And the fourth row, a beryl, an onyx, and a jasper. They were enclosed in ouches of gold in their enclosings. And the stones were according to the names of the children of Israel, twelve according to their names, like the engravings of a signet, every one with his name, according to the twelve tribes. And they made the breastplate chains at the end of wreath and work of pure gold. And they made two ouches of gold and two gold rings and put the two rings in the ends of the breastplate. And they put the two wreathen chains of gold in the two rings on the ends of the breastplate. And the two ends of the two wreathen chains they fastened in the two ouches and put them on the shoulder pieces of the ephod before it. They made And they made two rings of gold and put them on the two ends of the breastplate upon the border of it, which was on the side of the ephod inward. And they made two other golden rings and put them on the two sides of the ephod underneath toward the forepart of it, over against the other coupling thereof, above the curious girdle of the ephod. And they did bind the breastplate by his rings into the rings of the ephod with a lace of blue, that it might be above the curious girdle of the ephod, and that the breastplate might not be loosed from the ephod, as Yahweh commanded Moses. And he made the robe of the ephod of woven work, all of blue. And there was a hole in the midst of the robe, as the hole of an abergon, abergin, with a band round about the hole that it should not rend. And they made upon the hems of the robe pomegranates of blue and purple and scarlet and twined linen. And they made bells of pure gold and put the bells between the pomegranates upon the hem of the robe round about between the pomegranates. A bell and a pomegranate, a bell and a pomegranate round about the hem of the robe to minister in as Yahweh commanded Moses. And they made coats of fine linen of woven work for Aaron and his sons. And a miter of fine linen and goodly bonnets of fine linen and linen breeches of fine twined linen and a girdle of fine twined linen and blue and purple and scarlet of needlework as Yahweh commanded Moses. And they made the plates of the holy crown of pure gold and wrote upon it a writing like to the engravings of a signet holiness to Yahweh. And they tied unto it a lace of blue to fasten it upon, on high upon the mitre as Yahweh commanded Moses. 
This was all the work of the tabernacle of the tent of the congregation finished. Thus was all the work of the tabernacle of the tent of the congregation finished. And the children of Israel did according to all that Yahweh commanded Moses, so did they. And they brought the tabernacle unto Moses, the tent, and all his furniture, his tashes, his boards, his bars, and his pillars, and his sockets, and the covering of ram skins dyed red, and the covering of badger skins. Badgers? Badgers? And the veil of the covering, the ark of the testimony, and the staves thereof, and the mercy seat, the table, and all the vessels thereof, and the showbread, the pure candlestick with the lamps thereof, even the lamps to be set in order, and all the vessels thereof, and the oil for light, and the golden altar, and the anointing oil, and the sweet incense, and the hanging for the tabernacle door, the brazen altar, and his gate of brass, his staves, and all his vessels, the labor in his foot, the hangings of the court, his pillars and his sockets, and the hanging for the court gate, his cords, and all his pins, and all the vessels of the service of the tabernacle for the tent of the congregation, the cloths of service to do service in the holy place, and the holy garments for Aaron the priest, and his son's garments to minister in the priest's office. According to all that Yahweh commanded Moses, so the children of Israel made all the work. And Moses did look upon the work, and behold, they had done it as Yahweh had commanded, even so they had done it, and Moses blessed them. All right. um, thus concludes the reading of that passage of Exodus 39. Um, I was going to say it uh, would have not been a bad version to read, it. you know, a different version. Just, it, it's good. Now, let me say this. Um, I really like the King James Version. I mean, to me, it's it's the, the best and the greatest translation into English ever, period, bar none. You know, it has majestic language. It's Shakespearean. There's even a tribute to Shakespeare in Psalm 4610, if you count. It was the 46th anniversary of his death. If you count 46 words from the beginning, is shake. And if you count 46 words from the end, is spear. So, uh -uh. Little known fact. Oh, well, maybe you already know that, but hey, if you don't, you do now. Okay, so some of the words are, you know, what I'm going to say is that I like the King James, and then of course, if you're going to do any serious Bible study, you've got to basically, you can go to Englishman's Greek Concordance, you can go to Hebrew Englishman's Hebrew Concordance, and you can go to Strong Concordance. Everything is run by the numbers off of Strong's Concordance, off of the King James Version. So you get you're stuck with it in some way, shape, or form. That doesn't mean that all the other versions are not good for commentary. Okay, so in this in this case, you know, you're going to get different readings for a lot of those oddball, you know, unusual words, like that "ouch" thing, you know. <laughs> so, and it's going to you know, some of these gems are going to be different, you know, carnelian, topaz, emerald, green feldspar, sapphire, diamond, orange zircon, agate, amethyst, beryl, onyx, and jasper. So. Um, Settings of gold, you know, ouch, gold, whatever, pouch, ouch, pouch. So, uh, one other comment is there is, I'll look up the word Leiden. There's a, in, elect, in the electricity world, there's a Leiden jar, and there is a coat, which is a grounding coat, a shielding coat. And basically, what is described here in the, uh, uh, Scriptures for the coat, it's got all the gold wire in it, it would have been electrically protective. It would have been a shielding and grounded, I think there's something dragging. So anyway, when they went into the holy place, the Ark of the Covenant, uh, in order to not get shocked, and see they are going to drag him out if they didn't do, they do something right, you know, they had a rope tied to their ankle so they could drag him out, um, in case they got electrocuted. So, I mean, that, you know, I'm just saying, the coat fits, the Ark is you know basically it's a description of a very powerful capacitor so um anyway that's all i'm going to say and i'm going to move on and i'm going to get back on the call i was on earlier and i wanted to get back on there's a teaching time and then the torah so i'm going to get on before the at least before the torah so i'm going to go ahead and finish this one out so hallelujah uh, next week will be different so like i said i'm going to keep doing torah readings on seventh day gregorian that's a day all right come on now Click it. Bam. All right.